Hello and welcome back to On Point HQ and this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a different video format uh, if I'm being completely honest. In the past I've done quite a few um, how I paint videos, so how, how, how I go about painting different things but it's always been after I've painted them. So what I thought this time, to start off something a bit new, uh, will be to show you how I go about painting something. Um, it's also one of the few videos I've done where I've not got a few pointers on a piece of paper. So this is completely, completely off script, completely ad-libbed. So forgive me if I ramble on somewhat. So what am I going to be, how am I, how I do it today? Well, I thought I'd start with something a bit, a bit simple and something I've done very recently, which was my um, Vansar uh, Necromonda. Now the bases that come uh, with the kits are these, these pre-rendered um, bases that Games Workshop now throw in with the, with the, the Necromunda kits. And it's the first time uh, I've really seen them in the flesh well, once I bought my, um, my Vansar. And I was really looking forward to painting them. Um, and I thought I wanted them to look really grungy, uh, a bit beaten up, like you'd expect to see in the Underhive. So I thought I would do a very, very short video on how I paint bases for Necromunda. Um, so let's get straight down to it. What you'll see here is this has already been primed or based in uh, Abaddon Black from Citadel. Uh, I use a combination of uh, Vallejo and Citadel paint. So where I don't give a brand name, please forgive me. I will get used to this moving forward. But this has been uh, primed in Abaddon Black. Um, for the base, what I'm going to use is a sort of um, a, a, a kind of a, a, a metal -y, um, uh, effect really. So what I'm going to use is uh, Gunmetal Grey from Vallejo. Now you could use that on its own. For a more sharper, richer metal colour, I also add a touch of Natural Steel, also by Vallejo. So what I'll do is I will just start to paint this the metallic colour. Again, with the Natural Steel, I don't put put too much on, it's just a, just a little a little drop just gives it that edge add a dash of water just to dilute it slightly and all I'm going to do is just basically paint paint the surface in a couple of you know, thin coats of the um, the mixture You could use one thick coat, but what I found is with, with the mixture, one thick coat, it kind of, it looks really grainy. Um, and what I tend to do as well is I don't, I don't go really into the, the, the recesses. Um, it gives it that, that bit of shadow to start off with, but we'll be using inks later on in the process. And that will create the, the shadow and the perspective at that stage. But like I said, it's going over with a few a few lighter coats of the, or a few diluted coats of the uh, natural steel and the Vallejo gun metal grey. Um, I, I don't want it. I don't want it too stark either. I mean, this is the underhive, and we are going to be adding uh, different washes and effects to it anyway. So that is going to be enough. So just wait for that to dry. We've got a few more areas there so that's it that's it done um, for the for the base coat again just a very very quick um, a quick base coat over there using uh, gunmetal grey and natural steel from Vallejo um, I'm going to leave that to dry now um, what I'll do is I'll come back when that's dry and we'll move on to the next stage so see you soon Okay, welcome back. Um, so the um, the base coat has now dried fully and it's time to add the weathering. And um, we do this using uh, a number of washes. Uh, before we move on to the washes though, I'd just like, I'd like to point out the horrific looking cut I have on my finger. Um, this was caused by me uh, over vigorously cleaning a wine glass uh, about a week ago, um, subsequently slashing my finger pretty badly. Um, but it's healing, um, but apologies that you have to witness such a 
a pretty grim looking cut um, through this video. Anyway, moving along. Um, now we, we, what I do is I used um, different washes from Citadel um, to build up the, the level of detail, uh, the grime, the muck, the dirt um, on the bases. Um, I used three of these, um, three old favorites. So we've got Norn Oil, everyone's favorite Agra Earth Shade, and not everyone's favorite uh, Reikland Flesh Shade, but that's one of my one of my one of my favorite washes, Reikland Flesh Shade. Now what we're going to do is add these um, just directly onto the base, uh, and what I'm going to do is use my big wash brush. This is a size six ah, Windsor and Newton brush. Um, these are excellent for applying washes, um, and you get you can get quite a good point. So you can you can actually get quite a, quite accurate uh, application of wash and ink using this brush. Now you can apply these in in any um, combination that you, you you want to. What I tend to do though is go with non oil, then Agrax, then Reikland, um, and then once once that's dry, I'll add one last layer of effects. What we'll do is we'll start off using the Nuln Oil. And again, what I tend to do with, with, the, with all my Citadel washes is tend to wash them down slightly and it can, just gives it a bit, a bit more uh, extra flow. So all we then do is just use the big brush to apply Nuln Oil. to the the base again drop it into all the all the, the, the cracks the recesses um, that will provide depth and shadow so again just use the one I just use, I just use the, the the one or two applications of it again it's it's I've watered it down so it flows really well in between all the um, the cracks in the base so once that's done wash me brush is well I mean you can leave that to dry what I tend to do though is just kind of work, work the the washes together so while the um, the non oil is still resting on the base I'm going to come in now with a bit of Agrax Earthshade. Again, just a dash of water to improve the flow. And again, I'm just going to go over the base. And what this does, it mixes with the Norn Oil. And you can combine the two together. Again, just, just work it round. And it produces a, a, a say, a, a, more, a more dirty, a dirty look, like so. Uh, what I'll do is at the end of the video, once everything's dry and everything's been applied, I'll do a couple of close-up photographs because I'm still learning the zoom function on this um, on this camera, the massive luddite that I am. Um, but it'll give you a better a better sense of what the finished the finished base looks like um, with all the washes and effects applied. Okay, so that's uh, Agrax added, and the final wash I use is Reikland. Now this is a kind of a a reddier, more ruddier looking um, wash. Um, I use it, as it says, flesh shade. I primarily use it on, on flesh in combination with um, Cadian flesh tone or, or, or Kisla flesh. But with this, it works really well. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a, I say a brighter a brighter look and it gives a more rusty, rusty colour. But again, we'll add a wash of that now. And again, just adding a dash of water just to improve the flow and just water it down slightly. And again, we just want to come in over the top of that. And what it does, it, it gives it a, a, a brighter level of, um, of sort of, of grime and dirt. And it, it represents, like I say, rust 
um, other types of effects you would see on the floor of the underhive. So just dab off the excess there. If it does get a bit, if it does pool a bit too much, these washes you can just you can just move them around, move the water um, and the wash around. Hopefully you can see that um, a bit better than it looks on the camera. What I'll do now is I'll let that dry. Uh, once that's fully dry, I will come back in and there's one last uh, layer of effects to use that's to, to add a little bit of rust. Uh, but I'll show you how to do that in the, the next part. So see you soon. So the um, three washes have pretty much dried. Um, to give you a better look, what I'm going to do is mesh around with the autofocus on this thing and see if it can, there we go. So that's pretty much what it should like. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is apply the final, the final detail. And this is done using one of the paints from this, the rust and chipping effects from Vallejo. Um, now the paint I'm going to use, if I can find it, is this one here. And it's called German Red Brown. Now, it's a it's a really really straight. I think it's meant to go through an airbrush. Uh, yes, airbrush colours. I remember why I bought it now. Um, but it's really good at being applied by a brush, um, just for, for for rust effects. And that's what I'm going to do. Now it's really really watered down, so I don't need to add any dilution to this. All I'm going to do is apply that using. find it so this is an old triple note Windsor and Newton brush that has seen better days um, this is my standard go-to brush for painting is Windsor and Newton triple note from the um, series 7 um, look after these they will go a long way and um, this is one that I, I was using many years ago still has it still has its, its, its use though and I use it for for effects like this so what I'm going to do is use this to simulate rust as you can see it's really very watery as it goes through an airbrush and all i'm going to do is apply it quite liberally um, otherwise it looks like it'd be a floor um, um yeah, a floor you could actually fall through rather than walk across if you add too much of the rust i'm just going to add this to where you would find rust so just along the edges sharp edges of the metal uh, where there's been wear and tear people walking over them water gathering and that's caused um, rust or oxidization um, but this color works really really well so all i want to do again add it very sparingly um, less really is more um, when you're doing this and all i do is add it to the sharp edges again i don't try and be overly neat with this so any raised surfaces, corners. Again, I don't I don't want to do it over every single straight edge. Just apply it sparingly. And it gives the base a sense of of age and wear and tear. So there we go, if I just mess around with the autofocus again, see if I can. There we go. So as you can see, come on. Yeah, I'll give up on that. I will take some photographs and put it up at the end of the video. Um, damn camera. Um, but like I say, what I do is I use that very sparingly. Um, if you go over the top with it, it will it will take over the entire base and it won't look like rust. It'll just look like your base is completely rusted. Um, and that's how I painted my Necromunda bases. Uh, again, all in, not very long. Um, in fact, I painted the, the, when I did the last five of my Necromunda, 
I think it's only in about 20, 25 minutes. So it's a, it's a technique you can really, really smash through. Um, as I normally paint historical uh, bases for bolt action, I don't normally get to use techniques like this, um, but the washes and the uh, Vallejo rust really work. So that's my first um, how I paint uh, video live painting, so to speak, as it were, sort of, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's the finished base. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll put some photographs up now of the finished uh, the finished base. All I need to do is basically go around the edge um, and just apply a layer of black to separate the, the base from the upper base. And that's it finished. Well, I hope you found that useful. Um, please forgive my rambling, um, sometimes often incoherent um, mumblings uh, and this, this cut again. Hopefully next time I do this one, that won't be there. Um, but the, 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 the photographs I'll, I'll show next um, will show the, the, the base in a bit more detail. Well, thanks for watching. And as always, take care. May your dice roll well. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now.